Blessings, everyone. Originally, I was going to try to do the angel oracle, but spirit, it's one of those days when every time I think spirit is drawing me to something, there's a different plan. So <laughs> every deck that I've picked up, is it this one? Is it this one? They're kind of like, no, no, no. Something will happen. The cat's playing in the litter box or <laughs> someone's calling me on the internet. It's funny. So spirit has its own way of redirecting. Anyway. It seems like they want the divine counterpart reading, which is interesting because they know that I've been having a lot of struggle with this because personal reasons and trying to move away from the concept of it, but spirit is adamant. And so I surrender and trust always what is being shown. And so to walk my talk, I, I agree that I will do it. And so the first card that I'm going to pull today. I'm going to do three. They've directed three. The first one is a card about the romantic expression. This is what the divine counterparts are, the, the energy that they're embodying right now together. The second one will be the ascended master or light being that's working with the divine counterparts, whether they're noticing that there's been a lot of connection with this divine master, the ascended master, or the, the Ascended Master is asking the Divine Counterparts individually and together to connect, to work through whatever they're doing right now. And the third is the Archetype card. And this one is kind of like, it's kind of like the theme at this point of what the the connection is. It doesn't necessarily mean like when we think of soul archetype that it's the continued lesson for the divine counterparts, but it is something that's a theme at this point that both of them will definitely be connected with. And so as always, I ask source to please allow me to be a medium of light. And I ask the energy of divine mother and divine father and the Divine Feminine and the Divine Masculine to step forward to please help me to bring a message for the highest good. Thank you. And I will do the cards. I always do three. It is the Trinity, Source, Spirit, and Soul. So it aligns all three. And then I just allow whatever um, card moves into the awareness. It, sometimes they pop out. Sometimes they move to the side. Spirit will say, yes, that's the one or no, that's too many. I just kind of go, okay, this one moved out of the deck. Finances and career. Financial issues are a factor in your love life right now. And so right away, this is something that is being brought through for the message for both of the divine counterparts, the divine feminine and the divine masculine might be they're coming clear right away. They're saying this is the excuse a lot of times that they find themselves in that they're not moving forward with things because they're, they're focused on something. Maybe they're saying that they can't do something because they have bills to pay and, and it's overwhelming and they're focused on their career. And we tell ourselves, oh, I'm focused on me right now and I'm, I'm gathering up what I need to gather and I'm saving or I need to buy a house first. All the things that have to do with the monetary things that we are experiencing here. But they're saying that we have to learn to separate the connection, the divine connection and the love from the finances because not only can that that's drawing us completely away from the whole purpose of the divine connection but it's also creating an energetic exchange between the two that doesn't need to be there and that's a, that's one of the illusions that needs to be worked through not just for divine counterparts but for all of us here is that Love always makes everything better. And when we're having struggles, what better way to get through that besides our trust of source and knowing that we're getting experience 
and learning lessons from it, but that we can hold the space of love. That's when we should draw closer together. And we're never going to have the house on the hill first. We're never going to be financially situated enough. There's always going to be some kind of challenges in the physicality. It's earth school. That's why we're here. But what they're saying is if it's pushing apart, we have to ask ourselves why. It should be drawing closer. A lot of marriages break up because of the financial strain. And that's when we know that's a karmic thing because people that are connected in a divine counterpart connection, these challenges never push them apart. It always draws them closer because they're supporting each other through something. And that's what the divine connection is. Supportive. That's what source is. That's what our angels are. They're supportive. Never hear of anybody saying to an angel, I need your help. And then being completely projected into the opposite. No. So if it's a divine connection, they're very clear. They're saying that this is going to pull them together, that they're going to work through it together. Okay. Now the second one, three shuffles. This is the Ascended Master that's working with them through this. This is who they are aware of at this time that's stepping forward or who they can call on to help them through this challenge when it comes up with the material things. Maybe they're not in the same um, they're not living in the same area. They could be two different parts of the world, or maybe one of them is feeling more successful in their career. And the other one is just starting out. There's this imbalance of this, that they're, that they're in this space right now. And this ascended master will be exactly what is needed to help the divine counterparts through this. Okay. And I'm just going to allow the cards again. It sometimes it takes a moment. Just to get that energy, please, Divine Master, will you step forward and help the Divine Counterparts through this? Okay. They're saying take this one. Katsumi, stay focused. So we can call on Master Katsumi to help us stay focused and this Ascended Master is reminding me my ears are ringing. Stay focused on the love. Stay focused on the connection. Stay focused and bring that into the physical. Let that be the guide. Let that be the star that's guiding. Not that we are resolving any of these issues that we're seeing in the finance and career section because we're there's many people out there that are trying to start a business or they've decided to step into their spirituality and they're doing all kinds of things um with this what the ascended master katumi is saying is that we need to focus on the love to focus on the strength of that stay focused on the heart space and we don't have to do that alone again our divine counterpart is there with us to know the divine counterpart and what is being guided for them is to also know in the core of all that we are that what we are experiencing so are they karmic relationships are the give and take and imbalance one is 50%, the other is 50%. Maybe one is starting a career and then the other one is already established. When we think of, of such things, this is what's going on with a karmic relationship. One is pulling the other one up, the other one maybe at a lower point, and then it exchanges where the one that was lower is now at the higher point and pulling up the other. It's, it's always that balance. But when it comes to the divine counterparts, they're always going through the same or similar experiences. And it's not because they're the same soul. It's because they're the same frequency. And so Mr. Katumi is saying that we have to stay focused. We have to stay focused on the whole point of this. The whole point of being a divine counterpart isn't to be in this separation. There isn't separation. 
just like there isn't separation of source. That's the illusion. We cannot be in separation from the divine counterpart because even if we haven't physically met them yet, they're still there going in a higher level of vibration through the same motions we are. And they're always going to be drawn to us. It's always going to be like when you least expect it. You, you may be in the kitchen making a sandwich and then all of a sudden this person contacts you or, or something amazing happens. You just had the most mind-blowing spiritual experience and who's the first person you call? Or who's the first person that you think of? And so this is exactly what is being brought to by the Ascended Master Katumi is a stay focused on this use this, bring this space into the situation when we're going through these certain challenges, these career changes, all of the things that we see as financial issues or the illusion of an issue, to bring in the love, to bring in the sacredness. And we have to get through the idea of doing it alone. Yes, we have to be in that divine space, the master is saying, of our full self, our wholeness. And then everything will flow easier. Always the connection to source first, in our own space, through our own spirit, expressing our soul. But, if we've taken on part of this lifetime to reconnect with our divine counterpart, that we are fully and completely meant to do this together. It's the balance of yin and yang. Now, the third card um, is going to be for the archetype. And this is kind of a theme that's going on for both counterparts. It doesn't necessarily have to do with what the first counterpart card was, um, with the romantic card, which was the financial situation. This one's a little hard because it's, they're round. And so I'm just gonna move the cards around. Um, the shuffling is a little difficult. But this archetype card is based on kind of like what it is that they're going through together. Yes, they're having a financial maybe um, situation going on right now that they're working through that illusion. But the archetype will tell us the basic lesson of the souls through this as they share this. So now I'm just going to kind of move the cards around and whatever comes up. Oh, that's too many. <laughs> this is going to be an interesting challenge because I have not worked with this energy yet. So please be patient with me. <laughs> Spirit is saying, step out of your comfort zone today. Okay, this one flew out. So I'm going to do this. The kiss. And right away, I'm being drawn to the message that the kiss is the soul kiss. The kiss is the kiss of the divine. The kiss, the exchange that they have of each other, that they may come together and know each other fully in that way. And so this is not to be mistaken. A lot of times when we think of a soul kiss, we think of this romantic exchange. There's the sacral chakra that comes up. We're seeing this color and the fire, the red, which is the root chakra. But when they're saying the kiss, they mean that moment when the divine counterparts have accepted the journey. They have stepped into that space of trying to make people fit into the archetype. That's what this is about. We have the idea when we have a profound connection with someone that they're going to be our divine counterpart. And... We want to have these relationships. We want to bring it into the physical. We want to have te telepathic communication. We want to 
build this life. And part of the kiss is understanding that we have to get rid of the idea of what the divine counterpart represents and move more into the space of the kiss of the divine aligning what we're asking for because the divine counterpart is going to balance what we're lacking. This is going to take a little bit of a different turn. They're reminding me of something. Um, I was going to share a story um, on Twitter earlier, but they're bringing it up now because I'm doing the video. And so part of my story with my husband, Leslie, that was in spirit was that he was married. And they're speaking about that on the side of divine counterparts, the relationships that we have with people here. This happens sometimes where we meet up with someone and they're already in a relationship and their relationship isn't working, so we connect. That's what happened with me, with my late husband. But what Spirit's saying is there's a difference between people who are looking for other people to fill the space because they can't make the transition and be on their own. When I met my husband, I had just come out of a marriage and I had been alone for a few years before he stepped in for me. He was married for 35 years and he left his wife to be with me. But they're saying this is the key. That if someone loves us, this divine counterpart or not, that they're going to step into that space there's no leaving us hanging. I told my husband at the time, who was a new love, when he first came out, he came all the way over on a plane from Scotland to be with me when we first met. This isn't going to be a thing where you're going to go back home and I'm going to be on the side with your wife. You have to make a choice. And he knew right away. He proposed to me just a few weeks after being out. Um, from Scotland to be with me. So, of course, he had to return. The story goes, and he went back to Scotland and filed for a divorce, and then eventually we were together and married. And though he is not the divine counterpart, he set the tone for me. He was teaching me in the karmic relationship of what to understand that real love is expressing as. That there isn't the, the person being left on the side. That if someone really loves you, don't expect anything less. It's just you. There isn't room for two and three different people. And I know there's many people out there who believe that they can have these um, poly amorous relationships and that's fine but we're talking about the divine and the kiss the soul kiss the soul kiss from the divine between counterparts is two becomes one in source and ex allowing anything less is not honoring that divinity is allowing a karmic contract that we may be forming with someone saying that we're not worth that. That is not something that we should be accepting. True love is direct. And yes, there'll be many that would like to argue and say, oh, it's a process. Had Leslie not left his wife at the time that he was with to come be with me, there would be none of us that would never, never have stayed. He needed the time to get his life together as he was making a transition to another country. But the point is he did it. And what this card is bringing up 
excuse me, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing this out is because there's many people that settle in these relationships as second best, hoping that someday that their love is going to be strong enough and connected enough that they're going to pull this other person away from their life. They're not. They're using you. They're using you because they cannot transition out of a situation that they're, they're not happy with. Do not settle for that. If you really want to be with your divine counterpart, that is the space that we have to step into, not settling for anything more. Not waiting for someone to make us our, their love of their life. Not waiting for someone who is already in another karmic relationship to leave that space and be with us. That's, that's ego-based. That's saying, show me how much I'm worth because I don't think I'm worth more than that. Sometimes we just get stuck in this space of what's familiar. We don't want to take a chance on anything. We, we know this relationship. And that's almost like they're saying the subconscious is comfortable with that because if things don't go right, we're not sending them off to be on their own. They can go back to their marriage. And so I have no idea why Spirit is bringing this up. Um, I do know before I met Leslie, I was involved again with someone who was married. Um, that was from another place for almost five years and he never left his wife. He, at the very last minute when he was supposed to come and be with me, he decided that he couldn't do it. And it just, it sent me in a tailspin because I had spent so much time in my transitioning from my marriage and we were le I was leaving that to go on my own um, for personal reasons. So I understand both sides of it. I understand, and, and Spirit is bringing this up with the kiss. They're saying we, we are not going to experience this when we haven't stepped into our full power and understanding that if someone hasn't chosen us, especially after, with me, it was five years, five years I waited I went through the back and forth with that. And here was this man who, who knew me for about a year and got on a plane. You Actions speak much louder than words. And once we realize that and we step into that power and we realize we're not going to settle for anything less, the divine counterparts can be together. And your divine counterpart may might not be the illusion that you want it to be. Because Spirit said to me yesterday, anything from our past is in our past for a reason. And if it was meant to be with us now, it would be. We have to trust that. And the more we wait and we're pining and we're longing for something that isn't meant to be, the more we're taking away from this that Source is bringing us. And I understand that. And so my choice to be alone was because I trust fully. I've tried it a few times on my own. Now I'm leaving it to spirit. I'm leaving it to source, the guides, the angels to align what is right for me because they can see clear. And there's many possibilities for me out there. And I'm sure who's ever watching this with your waiting for your divine counterpart to get into sync together is looking for this. And what I can say that is being brought through today is that is letting go of all that was comfortable and what was and stepping into something that's new and fresh. It's nothing from our past. And I know this because I've been through past life aggressions recently that were very intense. And one thing that was very adamant is that was the past. And anything that's unhealed is going to keep coming up but it's still the past. We don't need it anymore. Look for what's new. Anything that is divine and divinely guided and divinely meant for us will always be new. It will always be something co-created from divine mother in the light of source. And it's a beautiful venture. Open up to that. Don't look to yesterday for what you want for tomorrow because you're just gonna be disappointed because everything that comes from yesterday 
It's just bringing everything with it that you've already accomplished. So I hope this very long-winded message finds you well and that somebody can take something from this. All my love, many blessings.